What's up, y'all? I'll give y'all a brief breakdown on what has been going on with me and the federal government. Um, I've been challenging jurisdiction basically since about 2014, not with the federal government, but in the state of Texas with having uh, statutes and codes thrown at me as criminal charges when there's no complaint, there's no supporting third party affidavit, and they immediately get an indictment. Um, I just had those state charges thrown out last Friday, last week Friday, um, after fighting those from 2013 and 14. Um, I went through about three, maybe three or four judges, maybe about five different prosecutors, utilizing the Constitution, utilizing my affidavit of status, basically stating that I'm not a fictional character, nor can a name that I go by be depicted as a fictional character on a piece of paper spelled in all capital letters. The state of Texas has done this. The federal government has done this. Plaintiff being U.S.A. Same way in the state of Texas. Plaintiff, state of Texas. Okay. According to the Constitution, the forefathers only gave two forms of jurisdiction. One would be common law, one would be admiralty military tribunal or maritime. People understand this. They are operating under admiralty law, where they're the kings and you're the subjects. I've went into various courtrooms, municipal, state, uh, now in the feds, bogus gun charge that the state dropped. They picked it up. It was ironic that it came out after my hands up, gun down video, which is what August I put out. Y'all go check it out. Hands up, gun down on YouTube and on Facebook, on my Facebook page. But nevertheless, um, they came after me, okay? The state I had been battling, um, basically putting my affidavit of living status on file. Affidavits are very important, okay? They are truth in fact until they are contested. None of my affidavits have been contested. Affidavit of status clearly states that I am a human being, a living soul, I am not a person, I am not a citizen, nor can I be depicted as a fictional character by spelling a name that I go by in all capital letters. That is not how I legally spell my name. My name is spelled only in upper and lowercase legal letters. And I say this before I get into any hearing and make sure I'm on the record stating that. So after eventually fighting and battling um, the state, you know, I got those charges dismissed about a couple of weeks ago. I've been battling the federal government, utilizing the same defense of the Constitution and exposing the same fraud that they do within their courts. I am not a part of the corporation of the United States of America. I have not entered into any contracts with the United States of America. The statutes and codes that the United States of America are regulated by do not apply to the people unless you're a citizen unless you have, uh, you call yourself a U.S. citizen, I'm a sovereign man of the land with unalienable rights of God to be free. So I invoke these rights upon the court in the corporate system. Of course, they don't want to hear any of that, especially from a black man, especially of my complexion. Maybe if I was a light-skinned brother, I'd probably get off now. <laughs> Just, <laughs> but, uh, and I invoke them intelligently, legibly, and affirmly. If that is a word, um, this occurred September of last year. Of course, I was indicted. They came to my house, arrested me, the whole shebang. I was incarcerated for maybe about mm, ten days. Um, I went to a bond hearing, maybe on the second or third day of incarceration. Uh, arraignment, should I say? Well, at my arraignment, uh, I was before Judge Austin in the Western District. Uh, Western District of Texas Federal Court He asked uh, Will I be Do I need a lawyer I denied counsel I just need to uh, Be released So I can prepare my defense Well 
they thought it best that I have standby counsel, David Peterson. I refuted that. I did not consent to any form of a standby counsel. Yet and still, they still appointed me standby counsel. Uh, he began to read off the charges and asked me, do I understand the charges? I replied to him, I do not understand. I don't understand why I'm here. I don't understand what caused you, this entity has to bring any criminal action against me. Where is a complaint from a person? He did not respond to that. I said, well, pretty nice guy too. Very nice guy. But of course, they all are part of the matrix. Regardless if they're nice and they're, and they're being real cordial, they all know they all know the game. They all know the lie that they're upholding and doing. So don't ever be fooled by a nice demeanor. But nevertheless, I um, uh, he asked me, you know, um, do, I'm aware of the, the the dangers of representing myself, uh, and I informed him, yes, I'm I'm well aware of that. Um, he asked me to enter a plea. I informed him I'm, I'm, I am unable to enter a plea at this time. He asked me, well, why can't you enter a plea? I don't understand these matters, and I'm unable to enter a plea, sir. I'll reserve that for a later time. Well, he said, I'm going to enter a plea for you on your behalf. I immediately said, I do not consent to anyone entering any pleas on my behalf. And if anyone does enter a plea on my, on my behalf, it is without my consent and is illegal. Well... Judge Austin said, well, we're going to enter a plea on your behalf for procedural purposes. I reiterated on the record that I have not given any consent to anyone entering a plea on my behalf, and anyone entering a plea on my behalf has done so illegally. Left it at that. He moved on. Well, uh, after a couple of few questions, he, did, he basically um, denied me bail. Denied me bail to, to get out. Um, said that I, he felt that I, since there was a, you know, I may be a, a threat and I may be some type of threat to the public. And I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, my record doesn't even tell I'm any kind of threat. And he said, oh, well, you're still engaging. And they came to your home and they found uh, marijuana paraphernalia. So, you know, a bunch of bullshit. Just basically keep me in jail because I was he felt where I was going with, don't need a lawyer, going to speak on my own behalf, unable to enter a plea. That already triggered him right there. So I said to myself, okay, I know what y'all doing. Y'all want to play the game. Okay. Denied me bail. Denied my bond. Went back to the, uh, to the U.S. Marshal's little holding cell. Uh, the standby lawyer came and talked with me. I already knew what time it was. Told him just go on the record as my attorney. Okay. Just be my attorney. Okay, and have us have the bond hearing again, and now you speak. Well, I stay in jail for another seven days or so. That next week, Wednesday, we had the bond hearing again. So I go there, they hauled me from Caldwell County. Remember, all this time I'm in jail now, okay? Away from my family, um, uh, away from my daughter, uh, having my daughter's mother to just go through loops and bounds, just toppling my whole life over, okay? So I... um. I go to court again. This time, the lawyer is speaking. Oh, wow. Guess what? I get bail. Well, he felt confident now that I'm being represented by Mr. Peterson, so and so and so and so forth. Right. He's going to give me bond. Now, I guess I'm no longer a threat now because the lawyer is representing me. Go figure. But, you know, it's a bunch of hogwash just to make sure that David could get paid off the system as well by having another client. I don't need a lawyer. I never uh, I never consented to having a lawyer, okay? But I did it just so we could play the game. So this was about October. Uh, I, got, I got out of jail October 6th. And October 6th through the 24th, I basically, you know, let the lawyer do his talking and I got a lot of intel that I needed from the court. At the same time, I'm working on my own defense. Gathering my paperwork, gathering my challenge of jurisdiction that I'm going to place on the record. Um, so I had all my documentation together. I was also seeking to find the oath of offices for federal judges and for federal prosecutors, which I was unsuccessful in doing. 
I could not find anywhere where I can get that. I know now about the Freedom of Information Act, but um, I didn't utilize that. So I just heard about something about gain, gaining that through the Freedom of Inf Information Act. Um, but at the time last year, I wasn't able to gather these items as I would normally gather them for the state officials. Anytime a judge, a state judge, a state prosecutor want to try to charge me with a crime or try to come with it, hey, I will immediately go and get their oath of office so I can place that on the record so I can have them as evidence of stating that this is where you have sworn an oath to uphold, protect, and defend the Constitution. And you are now in violation of that by your actions. So, that's evidence. Couldn't find it for the federal uh, judge or the federal prosecutor, who is Judge Sparks and federal prosecutor Anthony Brown, Sam Sparks, the oldest, uh, meanest judge I've been told in the, uh, in the Western District here in Texas, in Austin, Texas. But... You can be old, mean, as much as you want to, but you are bound by duty by the Constitution. So I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, whatever, you hold them accountable to your constitutional duties and have everything done on the record. So everything that is said is recorded and you can have a copy of it as I have for my December 9th pretrial hearing. So basically, uh, up until October 24th, I had uh, a lawyer, a federal prosecutor, a federal, excuse me, federal de public defender. Well, on the 24th, I basically much got all the information needed from him. They were moving forward with a court, with a trial date on December 12th. So what I did was I fired him, relieved him of his duties um, on October 24th via email. So that'll be in writing. And I began filing my paperwork on October 26th. I filed an affidavit of living status, basically stating that on, on an indictment, they have the United States of America in all caps, and they have a name that I go by in all capital letters. <clears throat> that is the fictional character, people. That is what they do. They turn, turn you into a corporation, a fictional character, cartoon land on paper. Well, what we knowingly go in, unknowingly go into court and what we do is we walk in there. Of course, there's an undertone of fear because they operate with fear, fear and intimidation. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the courtroom and they six or seven sheriff uh, guards are in there as if I'm going to blow the place up or, 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 or shoot somebody. But it's the power of what you know that exposes the fraud that puts the judge in fear and the prosecutor as quiet as a church mouse. He doesn't even respond. It usually turns out to a debate or, an, or a confrontation between me and the judge. The prosecutor runs to the corner and don't say anything. When asked a question, he mumbles and jumbles and ho-hums. Or the judge would say, don't even, don't talk to him. Something like that. You know, because they're all in cahoots with this whole process. This whole trickery. This whole lies. What they do to incarcerate and keep the federal prison and the state prison industrial complex is going. Okay, they need to keep harvesting bodies. Okay, and the less you know, the quicker you're able to go. But in my case, I want everyone to, to, to basically uh, go and check me out um, or go and look up the record and see all the documents that I filed. I'll give you the case numbers here in a minute. <clears throat> but um, um, got rid of the lawyer. Um, I went, and the lawyer contacted me a few days later and said, well, I got your request to get off the record. I will do so. But we must have a Ferretta hearing. Judge Austin, who's a magistrate judge, wanted to have a Ferretta hearing. So, okay, want to see if I'm competent enough to represent myself. Or I like to say, speak upon my own behalf. I am not representing myself. I'm not a representation of me. I am me. I am myself. I am I. Okay, so you speak sujuris which means that I'm competent to speak towards the facts of the matter, okay, which I am. Okay, so we have the Ferretta hearing. And in the Ferretta hearing, I'm very cooperative. I don't, you know, I don't go into my challenges there or what have you because that's not the judge that's going to be presiding over the case, okay? He's just a magistrate judge, okay? So he's asking me questions, my education, background. I answer all those adequately or properly, and no drama. He comes to the conclusion. Okay, Mr. Williams, I see that you're a competent, you're a very intelligent man. 
you seem to know what you're talking about and I deem you adequate to uh, represent yourself. Great. All right. Well, I want to warn you that the uh, you, you should have... Uh, hold a second. You should have Mr. Uh, Mr. Peterson represent you. He is he's a fine attorney. He's this, he's that, and the third. Um, I respectfully decline any representation or anyone speaking on my own behalf because the lawyer knows the game as well, okay? And that's what they do, all right? Lawyer basically rubs your back as he walks you to the guillotine, okay? They may have some lawyers who may get some stuff thrown out and maybe you know maybe good you know in what they do but for the most part all of them are in on the fix okay the lawyer is like the fox garden hen house okay he's never going to talk about jurisdiction he's never going to talk about violation of due process of law he's never going to state that yes the fictionalization of a, of a person of a body is done on an indictment in order to bring forth charges because he's a part of the same corporate structure and he has sworn an oath to uphold the court as an officer of the court. He's not an officer of the people. He's an officer of the court. So I don't, have, I don't care how much money you go out and run and pay a lawyer. Trust me, he is siding with the court to try to make sure that he does what the court wants to do when it comes to this matter. They just play, they just play back and forth. Let's make a deal. And if you want to pay for let's make a deal, you can knock yourself out. I would rather deal with them and attack the truth, okay, at the heart of the lie. Because I'm a man of principle, I'm a man of honor, and I'm a man of integrity. And when I joined the Marine Corps, I rose my right hand, and I pledged an oath to a constitution that my people didn't even have any part in writing, okay? We were actually getting beat and hung in the back while this document was being drafted, okay? Raped. And all kind of atrocities done to my people. And I was considered three-fifths of a man when the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and all these documents that the forefathers of this country enacted and put together. So those who are ancestors of those forefathers, I definitely deem you necessary to uphold the words of those who have framed this Constitution and who have framed this country. Okay? I hold no loyalty to such such documentation because I my oath is over with that. But yet still, you, the judge, the prosecutor, have sworn oaths of office, which they violate. Okay. So uh, we have the hearing, everything goes fine according to the judge. Um I'm I'm able to represent myself. So now December 9th rolls around and I go into my pretrial hearing. This is the federal courthouse here in Austin, Texas. I go into my, I go into the, um, the courtroom. Um, uh, the hearing commences. Um, I have all of my documentation on me. I have everything that I've placed on the record. And the judge began to state that he's here to help assist me with the trial and make sure that all of my constitutional rights are protected. I say, well, thank you very much for, uh, for that, sir. But I'm rather confused at these proceedings and how this court is moving forward to a trial when jurisdiction has been challenged on the record and Mr. Brown, the prosecutor, has not provided any proof of jurisdiction. Jurisdiction meaning, not location, jurisdiction meaning, do you, does this entity have a right to legally move upon me in a criminal fashion or civil manner? What legal jurisdiction is this court invoking to go move forward with a trial? He said, um, well, I do have jurisdiction. Well, sir, according to Supreme Court ruling, and I'll just start, right, just start rattling off the list of Supreme Court rulings that I have. Okay. Of course, I don't know them by heart, but um, I could just start rattling off a few just to, you know, give you an idea of, you know, how I came at them. Okay. And his responses to these and to me on these rulings um, basically I stated well not in here ok 
Okay, give me a second. When I um when I start blasting on them and start adding them with these Supreme Court rulings, which are binders upon the court. Okay, any any uh state has to abide by federal uh, law, state, feds, and Supreme Court. That is the hierarchy. Okay. And I also hit them with a motion to certify that counsel certify the charges. A demand. Take a look at it here. Motion to demand opposing counsel to certify charges. Similar document that I use here. In the um in county court, in state court, municipal court. Certify that your charges are constitutionally compliant. And that's a motion I just put forth. Of course, they denied the motion because he's not going to do such a thing. So basically, I just started rallying off Supreme Court rulings. Joyce versus U.S. There is no discretion to ignore lack of jurisdiction. Mello versus U.S. Once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed when it clearly appears that the court lacks jurisdiction. The court has no authority to reach merits, but rather should dismiss the action. Lantana versus Hopper. Court must prove on the record all jurisdiction facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. Dillon versus Dillon. Since jurisdiction is fundamental to any valid judicial proceeding, the first question that must be determined by a trial court in any case is that of jurisdiction. That's Dillon versus Dillon, 187, page 27. Okay, and that's just a few of them that I started rattling off. Of course, he ignored that, and I say, well, sir. I have a right to know what form of jurisdiction is this court attempted to invoke. The uh, Constitution affords two forms of jurisdiction that American people can be charged with a crime under. One would be common law, and one would be admiralty military tribunal, maritime. Since I am not a party to any foreign contract, since I have not entered into any contract with any foreign party, then I do not qualify, nor do I fall under any admiralty law. So I must assume that this must be a common law jurisdiction court. He didn't answer, didn't respond to that. I said under common law, sir, there must be a complaint first filed by a person. So I have an opportunity to face my accuser. The plaintiff listed on this document is a corporation that contains hundreds upon hundreds upon millions of people called the United States of America. That's not a person. I'm unable to face my accuser if it's a corporation, one of which I have not entered into any contract with, one who I've defaulted any notes with, and none who am I a creature of. I'm not a creature of the United States of America. I'm a creature of God, a free living being with a soul, a human being, before any declaration of a person or a citizen even comes into play. I said, well, sir, what form of jurisdiction is this court attempting to invoke upon this trial? He said it's statutory. I thanked him for his response, and I kindly asked him, uh, Sir, can you inform me where this form of jurisdiction is published so I can fall up under it? No such, no such, published, uh, no such thing published as statutory jurisdiction. He mumbled, uh, Congress made it up, and such, Congress declared it such and such, such and such time, this and that, that and this. Well, if it's not constitutional, then you cannot go by it. You have a sworn duty to protect and uphold and defend the Constitution. By the way, sir, I place a demand for you and opposing counsel to place your oath of offices on the record by this date. Has the judge done so along with the prosecutor? Oh, yeah, I read something about that where you said that if I, if I, uh, holy hell, or break loose if I didn't, if I didn't, uh, uh, place my oath of office on the record, and I've been doing, I've been appointed by uh, President Bush in 1990, goes on into this story and stuff, which actually, you know, makes no, you know, doesn't, it's not on a, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference how long you've been hoodwinking, bamboozling, lying, deceitful, to people, I could care less how long you've been doing it. You want to try to, and what they'll try to do is they'll try to veer off 
and start, you know, asking you personal questions like, uh, have you ever, have you ever had mental treatment or mil- uh, for mental illness or anything like that? As if you're crazy. I said, so that's irrelevant. It's time. I have a line of questionings that I need to, be, to gain a greater understanding for. Of course, he wants to try to bypass that and ask me, what were you, what were you doing in 1990? I totally ignored it and went to my next line of questions. I said, sir, standing behind you and to your, to your rear right is an American flag with yellow fringes upon it. I, being of ex-military, have a great understanding of that meaning admiralty law military tribunal venue. Well, people who talk about that, I've, you know, many people have put went to jail talking about the same thing. Okay, so that stuff there doesn't make a difference, what you're saying. Uh, I've placed many people in jail for saying that, yet he never answered the question of whether it's admiralty, military tribunal, or common law jurisdiction. He basically avoided all such questions. Okay, so I say, well, sir, um, it's clearly obvious that there is a conflict of interest here. Okay, for number one, you are a federal judge, correct? Say yes. You're a federal judge for the United States government. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, I am. I was appointed such and such with President Bush. He bloviated on some of his, you know, his points on how long he was judged. Say that's great. Clear cut. You're a federal judge for the United States government. We got that understood. The prosecutor now is also a uh, employee, or he's a federal prosecutor for the United States of America. Is that correct? Well, uh, he works. He works in the Western District of, of of Texas, and he tried to break it down like that. You know, well, technically, he is a United States of America uh, prosecutor for the United States government. You are as well a judge for the United States government. From where I stand, sir, that's a clear conflict of interest. Judge cannot preside over the same case that that he's that he's empowered by the employee. You are employed by the plaintiff, so is the so is the uh, the prosecutor. All right. <laughs> so last time I checked, that's called conflict of interest, sir. This matter should be moved to the Supreme Court. Of course, uh, he ignored that as well, and uh, I start rattling off the difference between a crime. A crime is an act against a person or a people, where someone has been injured. Okay, the accusation that's made here is a statute or code of a corporation. There is no one here claiming injury before this court. There is no complaint on file, which there must be. On the common law jurisdiction, there must be a complaint. There must be an affidavit. And then you go to an indictment. It's like playing baseball, okay, people? When you play baseball, you don't run a third base first. Well, that's what they do when they indict us. They skip a complaint, skip affidavit they run to an indictment unless you've harmed the person or you've harmed the person's property or someone's property then they can have action to move against you okay that person will file a complaint an officer will take it down as an affidavit go to a grand jury get an indictment well in order to keep harvesting these bodies they can't do that process like that and that is a violation of due process of law you must take all your steps in order to bring forth an accusation or a crime to me. You can't skip. You can't skip A, B, C, and jump to D. Who plays baseball and run a third base first? Your legal system, the corrupt, corrupt, crooked legal system, and those who are proponents of the system, and they know this game. Okay. So I'm hitting them. I'm killing them. Killing them with Supreme Court rulings. I'm killing them with. Uh, 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 the difference between uh, what a crime is, how statutes and codes do not apply to me as a sovereign man of the land. Your statute, I'm not a part of your corporation. I have not, I'm not employed by the United States of America. The United States of America does not wake me up. The United States of America does not feed me, does not clothe me, does not house me. And I'm not a creature of it, nor have I entered into any contracts with it. So it does not have jurisdiction to bring any action against me. And once I do challenge jurisdiction, United States Code 556D clearly states, and these are one of your laws, that once jurisdiction is challenged in federal and or state court, it must be proven on the record. It means you must bring proof. You can't assert it. You can't give it to the prosecutor. You can't say I have it because I'm this and that and that. No, that's an excess of want. So you've basically 
you've basically committed a crime in that fact. You are basically in violation of due process of law. You have violated jurisdiction. And the furthermore, this is the kicker here. While I'm in court answering these questions, he was getting very upset, very upset. He said, Mr. Williams, I deem that you are incompetent. This trial is going to be a farce. And I'm going to order that Mr. Peterson be your, be your representative and your lawyer. Huh? You're going to make someone be my attorney? You're going to tell me that I'm going to be represented by somebody. And then furthermore, he said, when this trial begins, Mr. Williams, if you disturb it, if you interrupt it, if you attempt to bring forth any challenges, I'm going to have you locked into a room by the U.S. Marshals, and you're going to watch the trial from a television. Wow. I was, I was flabbergasted. I was like, excuse me, sir? That's illegal. You can't appoint, you can't force me to have anyone that, you can't force anyone to be my attorney. Secondly, you can't lock me in a room, okay, and watch a trial go on without me being there. Because I'm going to challenge jurisdiction and I'm going to inform the jury of what is going on. You cannot do that. Oh, can't tell this judge what to do. Uh, he got up and walked out. Okay. Guy, he, he got up and just walked out of the proceedings, left me standing there, ask, asking him, still asking him questions. Sir, where is the victim? Who is claiming injury here? There is no injured party. The United States of America is a corporation who has no jurisdiction to bring any action against me. He left. Pew! Went by the door, closed door. U.S. Marshals start gathering around me, telling me, okay. It's adjourned. You can exit the premises. I'm like, so I leave. Of course, I'm under bond. Okay. So I have to show up Monday for this trial. I show up Monday. And yes, there is a television facing the, ju the, the, the jury. There's a camera set up. Oh, he's ready to place me into a room. Okay, and lock me in the room or lock me up or put lock me up until this trial is done. Well, needless to say, I sit there and I'm watching them do their bringing, bringing witnesses about a gun and how it was made and all this, all of this BS, all of this flow showing, making me seem as if I'm fucking public enemy number one. But yet, there was no one who got up there and said, I've caused anyone harm. I've harmed the person's property. No one. Of course, the prosecutor paints a horrible picture of me as a gun toter, abuser. I'm a black man, white jury. Needless to say, they found me guilty on one count. Uh, and surprisingly, the judge acquitted one count. Because of the prosecutor error on something. He, the prosecutor dicked up on something. So he acquitted that charge. And the jury found me guilty. So here I am found guilty. Of course, I'm immediately, immediately thinking I'm going to be taken into custody. Okay, taken to jail. Uh, and I'm going to find out from jail where's my what I'm going to be sentenced to. Well, he allows me to remain on bond uh, pending sentencing. Ask, you know, can I trust that you'll come back, Mr. Williams? For your sentencing, I'm like, sir, I don't have a choice. You know, you have the power of the United States Marshal. If I don't show up, you're going to put out a warrant for my arrest and they're going to come kicking down my doors like they do, like a bunch of stormtroopers will do. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Yeah, I know. I know. That's the only power you have. I didn't tell them that, but that's the only power they have is gunpowder. Okay, because without this force, no one, no one will participate in these lies and this deception and this devilishment. They do upon us, and especially if you're a minority, if you're black, Hispanic, any kind of minority, they definitely trying to come for us first and foremost to fill up their jails. All right. The, the, the stats tell you the story. OK, so you ain't got to believe me. Go look at the stats. But I am a different cut of breed. I go in there and I, I hold my ground. I, I, I give them their laws that they have to abide by. And as you can see, just through this testimonial right here, they have broken three of them. My right to counsel, jurisdiction, 
due process of law. So on the second day of trial, I filed a Title 42 deprivation of rights lawsuit against the judge and against the prosecutor to seek some type of recourse, some type of, because I know they're about to do some irreparable damage to me, okay? But just to go back a little, the second day of the trial, I filed a lawsuit in the courthouse against the judge and the prosecutor. Um, have them serve through process server the second day of the trial, or third day of the trial. They were served with their lawsuits, and I just sat back and just watched them. I didn't participate in anything. I didn't take a stand. I didn't do anything because I have not consented to this unlawful trial. So nor am I going to participate in it. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to give you any reason to think that I've began participating with this unlawful trial. But they've taken me to trial for number one, without a complaint. Secondly, without an affidavit. As a violation of jurisdiction, they still moved forward. And this is the federal government where the Constitution is supposed to be taken and held highly. Okay, in the state courts, they dick around and play around with it. Municipal courts, they don't want to hear nothing about that. They're, they're, they're the bottom of the scales. Your county courts as well, too. They don't, wanna, they don't want the fraud to be exposed. But yet and still, the federal government wants to show off their nuts. And those who have been in this position of power are corrupt. And their egos are to a point whereas. I'd be damned if you come in here telling me my law and how I supposed to do it, especially you, especially your kind, needless for me to say, nigga, you know, but regardless of all that racial aspect, I'm going to keep addressing your sworn oath and what the Constitution states that you must do because no one is above the law. I'm not above the law. Uh, but I don't go out committing crimes, harming people or harming people's property. That's an actual crime. Whenever there's a crime, there must be a victim. There is no victim in any of my situations or cases. Not a victim. The only victim is myself and my family who had to go back and forth to court. Uh, 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 me being incarcerated. Uh, the state put me on house arrest when I challenged jurisdiction. They did everything possible to me. But my will and my wherewithal is strong because I'm speaking truth and speaking truth to power. Okay? And that's what we must do as a people. Speak truth to power. You see, a lot of these cats run around here. You know, you want to worry about, you want to, you know, you, you're worrying about some of the dumbest things. Your mind, you get on Facebook, you want to laugh at a funny video or somebody, you know, you know, you want to see a fight on, you know, on, on on a video. You're watching reality shows. They got you. They got you stuck off in the matrix somewhere, blind, deaf, dumb, and blind. When there is a real, living, breathing enemy, okay, that is before us. That is here to extract your freedoms. They are ready to take it. To to be free is a God-given right. Animals in the in the beasts of the field are free to express themselves, do what they want. There's no governing body over them except for what they have to do and them eat and them have their basic needs. But every beast of the field is free. But our freedoms are being attacked and being taken away and eroded, okay, at its core. And it's done in these legal systems. And those who are part of the legal system know the level of corruption. Yet they go home every night to their nice houses and they sleep well, knowing that they just put another black man in jail. Uh, the Hispanic man in jail, woman, whoever, they caught, got you caught up into the web, and you don't know what to do. You go in there scared. You go in there depending on a lawyer that he's going to help you out. Trust me, he's going back there and make a deal. Have you ever wondered why when he go talk to the prosecutor, you're not there to talk with him? You're not there for the talk and discussion? How come I'm not there to talk with you when you talk to the prosecutor about my case? It's because they're going to make a deal, Okay. I might give you this one, but I still want to do that. If you have any form of punishment, you're not you, 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 you're not free. Free is the unfettered, uh, unviolated form of you living without anyone intervening, harassing, taking anything from you, or making you do things that are not desirable or that you don't want to do. You're forced to do by threat of coercion. So now this Thursday coming up, I have a sentence hearing, okay? And I'm going to type up an affidavit 
stating all the facts that I've lined out, okay, they're going to sentence me to some type of punishment, okay, to possibly take me away from my daughter for about 18 or 24 months. They have the, they have the, the power to do so, okay, at this juncture. On an appeal, yeah, I'll probably get it overturned, but that's 12, 18 months later while I'm sitting in somebody's jail cell after I didn't utilize the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the, the Supreme Court rulings. I've used every arsenal, okay, that is provided in the Constitution to protect me and my rights. Now that I'm not three-fifths of a man, but yet still, the Caucasian judge, who's the oldest and meanest in the building, decided to trample on those constitutional rights in order to continue this nefarious agenda. This insidious plot that goes on in municipal, county, state, and federal government when it comes to this legal system. Now, for all of those out there, continue fighting. Okay, get with me uh, so you can get a better understanding. I'm more than willing to help expand everybody's mind on this um, because right now with the climate that we're living in, you have politicians lying, the highest uh, level of office from the president office, lies are spewing down, and constitutional responsibilities are being trampled upon. And this is the only piece of document that say that, that protects us. That along with the Bill of Rights. When the forefathers framed this country, they never intended for the corporate states or the, uh, the, the, the government to intentionally charge us with statutes and codes, and they have a whole litany of them. They never intended for us to be charged with that. We have a free will to contract, to travel across this country. You don't need a driver's license to travel. You can travel uh, unfeathered by anyone across the nation. You can have the free will to enter into any contracts. You just don't have the right to harm a person or harm a person's property. And that's a criminal aspect and the, 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 the criminal aspect of the Constitution. The Constitution states that only like characters may bring action against one another, meaning a person versus a person, a corporation versus a corporation. Well, what they do to try to inline you with that corporation is they spell your name in all capital letters, thereby turning the living being you, Pernell Williams, into a corporation, a fictional character on a piece of paper, an indictment. Now, why is my name spelled in all capital letters? Because you're trying to fictionalize me. Well, you must challenge that from the onset. And regardless of what they bring you through, and trust me, I've been through it all, okay? If it was back in the days, I would have been hung by now. Nuts cut off and everything. Okay? But I'm a fighter. I joined the United States Marine Corps. I have those principles. I'm not unwavering. I'm not uncompromising integrity. I have I have a, a, a honorable position in life. I'm a man of my word. And when others swear an oath to uphold something, and they and they and they defy it at every turn, and they do things for a nefarious, insidious, uh, uh, evil, and lowdown purpose, and I know the truth. There's no way I'm gonna ever cower or pull my head down. I'm gonna walk into that courtroom invoking the same rights, highlighting where this fraud has been taking place, highlighting what you have done to me. So the record will reflect for anyone who comes behind me to see that they will break their own laws in order to incarcerate you and I. They will trample upon the oaths that they have taken to uphold and protect this constitution. And I will highlight to them, these is not my documents. These are documents that the forefathers of this country put together that you must abide by. You have not abided by the Constitution. You have not abided by Supreme Court rulings. You have not abided by your own U.S. Code 556D that states that once jurisdiction is challenged in federal or state court, it must be proven. You haven't abided by any of that, yet you want to call, call, charge me with a statute and crime and you want me to be punished for it? What a, what a hypocrisy. What a contradiction. But people, that's the time that we're living in and that's the real battle.
You see all that nonsense about you getting out here and you, you know, I know it's cool to have fun and all these cats rapping them. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an MC. I spit. I've been spitting since pff, I'm a Jurassic classic, easily 89, 90. Then did, did my thing in this music, still doing my thing in this music. But ain't no time for no dumb shit. Ain't no time for no talking dumb shit. Talk something real. Talk something that's going on. And this legal system, and most of y'all cats out there got caught up in I got a charge here, I got a charge there, got a charge there. Most of the time when I hear y'all, I just shake my head like, only if you knew your rights. But a lot of y'all not, a lot of y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't here yet. Y'all ain't here. Y'all want to be here yet and mad and going protest, but you don't want to address the system at its chest plate. And I'm going to attack it at its chest plate and at the head with the lies, with the deception, with its own laws that they must abide by. But they have broken those laws in order to get me into a subjective position. So Thursday, this week, we'll see. Uh, today is what, the 13th, I believe, June 13th, June 15th. I'll find out whether I'll be put behind bars, okay, for a statute and code, uh, one that I did not consent to. Uh, I did not consent to entering any pleas. Um, I haven't consented to any trial or any unlawful trial. I've challenged jurisdiction. I've tried to sue them. Come to find out, when I did file my Title 42 lawsuit, it got thrown out because they have absolute immunity. You cannot sue a federal judge or prosecutor in the process of them doing their duties. Well, their duty is not to violate my constitutional right. But they did so. And they threw my civil suit out. Even when I had a defense for it to be opened back up, they still threw it out. Say the time has passed. So these are all proponents working hand in hand in order to keep one another protected from the truth, from, from someone coming in like myself and actually, you know, having them to face their, their wrongdoings. Unlike you and I, who you do something wrong, they come in and they go kick your door down. Okay. So this is a little something uh, from me. Y'all keep checking me out. Um, I'm going to start keeping y'all abreast more. I've been kind of keeping this under wrap. You know, and not really saying too much about it and continue with my hip-hop chef and my hip-hop daddy daycare stuff. But um, um, I'm going to be filing an affidavit. Um, I said I was going to give you all the case numbers um, so you can go and um, check, out the, uh, check out the docket if you want to. And you can see some of the, um, the documents that I placed on file. Um, my civil case... Um, here in uh, Western District of Texas against the judge and prosecutor was civil action number A is in Apple, 1 6, C is in Charlie, V is in Victor, 1302 SS. And that's the civil case that I um, that I have here. I also have the, um, there's the criminal case number. I have the criminal case number for you. So if you, in case you want to go and check that out. You know, because you got to do some research and you got to, we all got to get together, everyone who's aware of this. And, um, oh, that's not it. And start, um, and start coming together with the truth and making sure that the truth gets out and make sure that those who are, uh, who are held accountable to oaths, that we, um, that we hold them accountable. We don't give them any kind of leeway. Okay. Uh, See, this is a bullshit document they sent me. So I guess the case number's in here too. So, so you can go and examine the record and you can see for yourself. Uh, let's see. Oh no, that's my civil suit. That they give a response to my uh, insufficient process of service because they've made a def uh, defense motion and didn't send me the defense motion via mail. But they doctored up some kind of document saying that they did and that I ignored it. Really, after all the stuff I've done, you think I'm going to ignore any any kind of documentation? It made no sense. No sense whatsoever. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here we go. And a criminal case in the federal court is A is an apple, 
one six C is in Charlie R is in Ralph two three seven SS those are the federal cases okay and my two federal cases I got my documents filed you can go and examine the record and check it out and see um, my criminal cases or felony cases in state court have all been dismissed um, obviously they got wise up because they were trying to take me to a trial that following Monday and they would have got their feelings hurt in the trial but the judge decided to dismiss the charges because lo and behold he looked at the record and he saw the documentation and he probably saw his oath of office on the record as well and knowing that taking me to any form of a trial where I'm allowed to speak and not thrown into a room is going to put the judge and the prosecutor on trial because I'm going to begin to enlighten the jury at what they do and how they do and of course that's extremely dangerous they'll never let someone like me get before jury and speak that's why the federal judge declared me incompetent and uh, forced me to have an attorney and violate my right to counsel so now Thursday is the date um, and I pray through my ancestors that they unbind me from this devil um, give me the strength to carry on which I will have to bless my family in the event that I'm being taken away unjustly when I have not harmed the person or person's property. So I give praises to the, uh, to the almighty creator of the universe, supreme source of power for all of us that's within each of us. Uh, definitely give praise to my ancestors who have came before me, who have struggled to make sure that I'm here and I continue this fight with integrity, with durability, with honesty, with love with my ancestors in mind, for those who couldn't fight, for those who were oppressed by this system, for my ancestors who were taken to the back and hung, who were castrated, for my for my foremothers who were raped, uh, beaten, had all kind of atrocities done to them, in this United Snakes of America, I will always fight. I will fight for what's right and what's true. And now that I am aware and that I know what this government does, state, local, federal, and how they come after us, it's time for us as a people to stand up and fight back because they only have power because we've given them power and we have the right to take that power back. Okay. So y'all stay tuned. So Black, the Southern Hip Hop Chef. Y'all check me out on my page, uh, YouTube, So Black, S-O-B-L-A-K-1. Uh, check me out on my Facebook page, Pernell Williams. You see a picture of me and my beautiful daughter up there, P-U-R-N-E-L-L, -L, Williams. Uh, so Black, the Southern Hip Hop Chef. Uh, it's my own catering. I do Creole Cajun Cuisine here in Austin, Texas. And um, I'm a chef. I'm an artist as well. So Black, S-O-B-L-A-K. Okay. Um, Y'all check out my page there with music, videos. Um, and check me out. And peace and blessings to all y'all. And hit me up if you, uh, if you have any questions.